Hello off-gridders and tiny house people. Welcome to video two in the series making your own free diesel out of waste plastic. Today I'm going to be showing you the pyrolization chamber and the fire chamber around it. We've inserted the Babington burner into it and then we're going to be going inside. I'm going to be scribbling down on a piece of paper the whole concept behind this so that you can see exactly what it is that we're going to achieve in another two or three videos time. So come on, let's get into it. Here's a quick explanation of the machine so far. In keeping with my mantra of recycle, reuse, repair, um, everything you see here, every single item is recycled, repaired and reused. We've got uh, second-hand oil drums, second-hand gas cylinders, second-hand chimney flue components, even the fire extinguisher you see at the top. Um, I scored that in a junk store. Um, at, at the age of 10 years, I think institutions just have to replace them as a matter of course. So it's a serviceable fire extinguisher, it's just that it's reached its 10 year limit and they got rid of it. So I bought that for $10 instead of 50 or 60 which is the normal price. We'll have a quick walk around so you can see things up close. Then I'm going to take you inside and I'm going to show you a little bit of the science that's behind it because some people can't get their head around this. Now here's the Babington burner that we built in the last video. That's now mounted into a tube and that will make it even more efficient because extra air will get drawn through this area around here to lean out the mixture and provide an even cleaner burn. Because a Babington burner can't start itself, it has to heat the afterburner tube that has to be done with a, with a, another fuel. I've chosen to use LPG, so for the first f couple of minutes of operation, this bottle will be used to deliver gas into the back and the machine will run on gas. As soon as the tube is warm enough, the oil will get turned on here and the gas will get turned off at the bottle and will be running on pure waste oil. The waste oil is gravity fed from this container here through this hose and I've already explained in the previous video how the air system works we've got a drip tray underneath just to be environmentally conscious because this is waste oil if the um, burner was to overfuel I wouldn't want oil dripping on the ground so that will catch any excess oil now here I've got a fish bin and an old car radiator. This is going to be filled with water to the top and we're going to be passing the vapors that come out of the machine through this radiator and chilling the vapors to condense them into diesel. The water that's in this bin will get circulated via a pump through a second radiator and that second radiator is going to be mounted on the side of the frame here and that'll have fans with a 12 volt supply and that will cool the water that is circulating between the two radiators. Today we're going to be talking about the heating chamber. Now, the, now that the Babington burn has been made and it's firing through this piece of stainless steel flue into the bottom of the 44 gallon drum, it's creating a spiral effect the heat, which is about 800 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, is circulating in the gap between the reaction vessel and the heating chamber. We've got a temperature gauge here and there'll be another temperature gauge mounted in here, so I'll be able to see the temperature in the two vessels. Shortly this is going to have an airtight seal placed around here because I've cut this open so that we can fill 
the reaction chamber with plastic. When the lid's placed back on, we will then have the reflux tube coming out of here and heading up to a high point. And after it crosses the high point, everything in the system is gravity fed down until the diesel finally comes down and settles in this oil drum here and can be drawn off for use here. I've been talking to some people who just can't get their heads around how this system works. I tried to explain to them that it's a little bit like a, a whiskey still, but the distillation art is still a bit of a black art. There's a lot of people who don't even know how a whiskey still works. But in this schematic diagram that I'm drawing now, hopefully you'll see pretty quickly what it is that we're building. This outer container is a 44 gallon drum, a 55 gallon drum if you're using American measurements, but a large oil drum. Into this large oil drum, we've put the Babington burner that we built in the first video through a tube and that's firing hot flames hot flames into the drum which in a spiral motion travel around the reaction chamber and exit exit through a chimney at the back so we've got hot air in hot air out the reaction chamber inside here is a sealed heavy wall vessel which i've chosen to make from a large domestic propane cylinder and we have a removable top with a clamping arrangement so that we can provide an airtight seal. And that will open and close to allow us, allow us to load the reaction chamber. The reaction chamber heats up. The plastic loaded inside will melt and boil and as it boils it will release the volatile gases the volatile gases will climb the reflux tube which is heavily insulated and once it comes out of the insulated portion and over the top it will start to condense. This is the highest point of the system. Once the gases have crossed this point and they start to condense, they can't drop back into the chamber. They must go downhill. So from here they go downhill into a car radiator that's lying on its side. This car radiator is lying on its side In a tub of water. I've chosen to use a 20 litre utility storage bin. Which is five gallons. So we've got five gallons of water at a high point with a car radiator immersed in the water. The gases are coming up the tube going over the highest point where they start to condense because the the pipe is allowed to cool down and they go into the chilled water and condense in the radiator into the condensate which is diesel. The condensate will come out of the radiator and will then come into a T-piece Where, with a tap, 
this here and a tap just here now in the first few minutes of operation before it's up to temperature we'll be getting what's known as the devil's brew this is an unusable liquid that will burn but it can't honestly be described as diesel so that becomes a byproduct and we will leave this tap open and this tap closed and in the early stages the byproduct will travel into this container this container will hold the finished product now this water is going to heat rather rapidly because the temperature of the gases that are coming into it are 350 degrees we've got to keep that water cool so we have a circulation system where the water is exchanged and circulates through a second radiator that second radiator is mounted to the frame of the machine and we have a pump here 12 volt pump and we will be uh, and we'll also have a fan on the radiator so this is a normal car radiator with an electric fan that's mounted exposed to the air that's operating this pump is operating the water is circulating through this upper container here keeping the radiator nice and cool to condense the gases that are coming out of here now there will be a small amount of vapor that travels right through the system that is very volatile highly inflammable and will not condense into diesel that is drawn off at a point here and that is brought down here and introduced into the burner to supplement the heating of the chamber and that my friends is a Pyrolyzing fractional distillation process. So that's it for video two. Things are getting pretty exciting now. I've got this thing sitting here right behind me in the yard. It's been just a pile of junk lying around for so long. I'm so glad to have everything made out of recycled components. Even the framework that is supporting the whole thing was a bundle of steel that I found at the dump as I was uh, dropping off my recycling. So um, we're getting very close now. There's not too much more to do before we can start test running it and uh, actually creating diesel. So thanks very much for watching once again hit the like button it's nice to see those likes piling up if you don't like this video press the dislike button twice try that see what happens and <laughs> uh, the other thing you can do if you want to keep up with this is subscribe because hey who knows what I'm going to be doing next tiny house off-grid resources give us a like subscribe see you later